is our tech corner today has everything to do about color. Now, you may have noticed that Mike and I are wearing slightly mismatched color shirts. Uh, this is a, a due to something called metamerism, and I'll, metamerism failure, and I'll get to that in just a little bit. So we all know how very important it is if, you, if you're uh, uh, trying to establish a brand, uh, either a corporate brand or a product brand. Color is very important. We've talked about this on the show. In fact, we've even shown a product like this. This happens to be a color checker from uh, x -Rite. This is the RM200, or also known as a capture. Uh, you can also use a spectrophotometer. And these are quantitative devices. These kind of devices actually measure the spectral response of the light being reflected off a of material. And as good as that is, the problem with it is that it's not human. And human eyes do not perceive color the same way as an instrument does. And this is really important because, as they say in the industry, the eyes buy. It's the eyes that determine the actual color differences and the, uh, how, how pleasant a color is or whether colors match. So it's really important that you go beyond quantitative analysis and you really do a qualitative analysis. And if you're going to do that, you need a product like this. This is the Spectralite QC, also from x -Rite. This is a calibrated light booth. It has several different sources of light in here, all to kind of mimic the different types of lighting situations you might see uh, in real life. Uh, different types of fluorescent, uh, different types of incandescent. It also can be customized with other types of light sources. We happen to have a standard unit here, and I'll run through that in a little bit. But this allows the operator to examine color the way a human being examines color, which is under specific lighting conditions. And let me just show you a little bit what this looks like. So if we go to our gauge cam here, I'll just show you what we've got going here. Right now, we happen to be looking at um, we happen to be looking at, uh, what am I under? Uh, a type of fluorescent light. This is called a U30 fluorescent light. This is a warm fluorescent light. This is something that is kind of favored by, let's say, retail stores because it has the benefits of being fluorescent, but it's much warmer than another type of fluorescent light, which I will go to right now. And that is a, a D65, which is a daylight balance light. Now, notice when I did that, let the light equalize here. You notice we've gone kind of from a warm color to a very cold color. Now the camera is kind of accentuating this that so you wouldn't see quite this drastic in real life. But essentially you're seeing what's going on. You're changing the color of the viewing field and that definitely does change the color uh, perception uh, for these various things that I have established out here. So and we can go to another type of light. Let's say we'll go to European style light. We'll just stay on the gauge cam here. This is a European style fluorescent. You see it's not quite as cold as the D65 I just had. Uh, let's, look, uh, let's go to an incandescent light. Okay. Now this incandescent is much warmer than let's say that warm fluorescent I showed at the, at the very beginning. So again, you see this color shift. Another thing I want you to notice, if you look at the bottom of the blue pen down here, compare the bottom of that blue pen to the blue post-it note that I have there. I want you to notice the differences in that color. Uh, actually, not the color, but so much the, the shading when I go to a compact fluorescent. I'm going to switch to that now. And you'll notice that the pen got a little bit lighter, or maybe the paper got a little bit lighter. Anyway, the, the shading on those two got a little bit closer. It's subtle. It's a little bit more obvious if you're actually looking in the light booth where I'm at. But there definitely is a difference between the way those two colors match uh, between the, uh, uh, the, the compact fluorescent light source and the UV light source. Now I'm going to show you another thing. I'm going to go back here to my U30 light. Another thing that happens is suppose your product's going to be viewed outside. So I'm looking at my product under this U30 fluorescent, and we're looking at my blue pen. Watch this blue pen as I turn on ultraviolet. You notice that blue pen just all of a sudden popped. Watch, watch the blue pen. I'm going to turn it off. All I've done is turn a little bit of UV light on and off. Notice the rest of the colors don't change, but that blue pen does. That's because that blue pen, if we can come back to our uh, wide camera here, if, we, if you look at that blue pen, it has got some fluorescent inks in, in the pigment in the plastic. So why is that important? Well, if, you're only, if your product's only going to be viewed in an office environment, maybe that's not important. But if you're looking for a color match between, let's say, a fabric and a piece of plastic, 
and uh, they match in, let's say, your office environment or your retail environment, all of a sudden you take them outside and the UV light from the sun makes that plastic pop, now you've lost your color match. That's why it's important to have a visual uh, look at what is going on with your colors. You want to make sure that they look like what you expect them to look like in all situations. Now, what we've been looking at right here, obviously, <clears throat> is a light booth. We can only put something of a certain size in here. Suppose we wanted to look at something much larger, like an automobile, or maybe a large piece of office equipment. Obviously, you can't cram it into here. This lid comes off. You got the booth portion, and you got all the guts, you got the smart stuff up here. You can actually suspend multiple units, let's say in a warehouse space. You could take, let's say, take 20 of these, suspend them from the ceiling, and daisy chain them together. There's some connections here. Daisy chain them together and control them all from the front panel or from, as I'm doing right here, from a computer. So one unit would control all of them. Now you could drive, let's say, a car into your warehouse, like the entire vehicle. Think about it. A car has got plastic bumpers, probably manufactured by one manufacturer, plastic trim work manufactured by another manufacturer, and it's got metal work and paint from yet another manufacturer. It comes into the factory floor, looks like everything matches just fine. The bumper matches the uh, plastic trim, matches the doors. But you take it outside, and all of a sudden, whoa, it doesn't match. Well, this way, now you have a way to drive a vehicle, light the whole thing, and now you make sure that your vehicle looks like in daylight what you would expect it to look like. Very important. Now, all of this is important, but it doesn't do you any good unless you have the same test setup no matter where you go. So, for instance, this, as I mentioned, this is, a calibrated, uh, this is a calibrated light booth. These lights are set up. They're known intensities. The intensities can be adjusted in certain cases. The color temperature is known. It's all set up here for our particular test. You want your suppliers to be able to do exactly the same test so that they're making sure they're sending you with the product that you want. So if you had this booth over at your supplier, you could download all of your settings into a file, send that file to them. They would upload them into their Spectralite QC, and they would be able to perform exactly the same test that you're doing. So the moral of the story here, and x right suggests this, spectral photometers, color checkers, quantitative checking, that's important. And you need to do that sometimes in order to establish your formulations. But in the end, remember, it's the eyes that buy. You need a human being looking at your colors to make sure that your colors match and that they're the colors that you expect. And for that, you need a light booth. So this, again, this is the Spectralite QC from x -Rite. If you want more information on it, if you go to the bottom uh, underneath the player page, you will see a link that will take you to, uh, that will take you to, their, uh, take you to their website uh, and actually to a specific page on their website that discusses this particular uh, discusses this particular project. Yep, there it is, Spectralite. Spectralite QC. QC from, uh, from X-Rite. And I tell you, this is, this is really a good lesson because yeah. it's, uh, talking to the folks at X-Rite, it's interesting. He says there's a lot of information you get from a spectrophotometer, mm -hmm. and it's very accurate, very mm -hmm. detailed, and you know, very specific to how much light's reflecting from where. But once you look at it with, a, with an eye, yeah. you may not be seeing what you're expecting to see. That's right. A good, good tool yeah. right there. All right, check it out. Well, thank you. Thank you. To